Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe has officially brought forward Bill 137. It's what he's calling Saskatchewan's Parents' Bill of Rights. And it is insane. Not only does it suspend a number of charter and human rights from children, but it also attempts to completely shield the government from any possible accountability. There have been widespread protests, countless letters. There was one protest with over a thousand people who showed up to support trans and non-binary kids' rights. There were also countless letters sent to the government. How many were sent in support of the policy? 18. And of those, only seven were parents. A judge said that the policy will do irreparable harm, but the government claims that it won't, insisting that there are ample supports for kids. Do you want to know what those ample supports look like? One psychologist for 2,904 students, and one social worker per 2,588 students. That's 7% less of each since 2018, and 2% more students overall. So the services are spread thinner than they've ever been. The children's advocate already spoke out against the policy, saying that it's going to hurt children. A judge said it's going to hurt children. The New Brunswick children's advocate said the same. The Saskatchewan Human Rights Commissioner resigned over this. There was a huge protest at the legislature. Then there's less supports than ever, but we're somehow supposed to believe that wraparound supports for kids exist. This is ridiculous. Kids are in crisis. Students need help. Teachers are begging for it. And instead of trying to help, Scott Moe is using cheap political tactics to distract from real, serious issues. Schools are literally falling apart. This school had its roof collapse in, and Gord Wyant went to have a look, and look at the smile on his face. He looks thrilled. Months later, this school still hadn't had its roof fixed and flooded. Teachers are trying to negotiate for better supports, and the government won't even talk to them about it. They're intentionally destroying schools in Saskatchewan, but in doing so, they're going even further. They're stripping rights. They are using the Notwithstanding Clause, Section 33 of the Charter. It sets aside parts of the Charter, but it's not meant to be used in the way that Scott Moe is using it. See, a case was brought forward by UR Pride to try to stop this policy, and they applied for an injunction. And the injunction was granted. And then almost immediately, Scott Moe announced that he was going to use the Notwithstanding Clause. This is not why the Notwithstanding Clause was created. It was not meant to be used until, at the very minimum, the judicial process had run its course. But Moe never planned to let the judicial process run its course. The original case brought forward by the government had barely any evidence at all. It had one expert witness from California. So the Notwithstanding Clause is meant to be used after the judicial process has run its course, but that's not what Scott Moe was doing. He got handed an injunction to stop this policy, and instead of letting the case run its course, he decided to just change the law. Even though the injunction specifically said that this case would be resolved within a couple months. But for some reason, Scott Moe instead decided to recall the legislature early and to use the notwithstanding clause to suspend several sections of the charter. But if you look at the original case, there's basically no evidence. The government didn't bring anything forward. 18 letters, only seven from parents, although Cockrell claimed that there were thousands when he wasn't under oath. But as soon as the injunction was given, the government announced that it was going to use the notwithstanding clause. It knows what it's doing is completely wrong, and that's why, in this law, they've sheltered themselves completely from accountability. They literally added into the legislation that nobody can bring proceedings against them for harm caused by this policy. This is a government that's failing at every turn. They're desperate to change the channel and terrified of members leaving for other parties. So rather than actually helping people, they're trying to start a culture war. And it's brought us international attention for all of the worst reasons. They're rushing the entire process, acting like this is an emergency, but they can't point at a single example of when this policy was needed. It's a solution in search of a problem. In the meantime, it's doing things like keeping the SAS Sexual Assault Center from giving presentations in schools. It's putting trans kids at risk. And it's making Saskatchewan look like a small, petty place to the rest of the world. But it's not too late. The policy's been brought forward, but it hasn't been voted on yet. Contact your MLA. Demand they don't support the bill. If you're not in Saskatchewan, be on guard against it in your own province. There's already talk about this in New Brunswick, Alberta, and Ontario, who are all looking at similar bills. This isn't about protecting parents' rights. If you're a safe parent, your kid will tell you when they're ready. If you really think you need government intervention to try to force your kid to tell you what's going on in their life, you have much bigger problems. You should probably start by talking to your kid. Better yet, maybe even listening. And if you're Scott Moe, I don't know how you sleep at night. You're willing to sacrifice the safety of trans and non-binary kids for political gains. It's disgusting. So contact your MLA. Show up at rallies. Stand up for trans and non-binary youth and stand against Scott Moe's insane overreach. Because who knows whose rights they're coming after next. Might be yours. Take care of yourselves, folks.